Dickerson. I'm Mr. Radford. And today we're here to teach you about chemistry. Welcome to the Viking Science Academy. So let's talk a little bit about matter. Hey, matter is anything that takes up space and has a mass. All right, so pretty much everything around us is matter, including like the gases in the air, right? Okay. Yep. <clears throat> so um, if you have some matter and it's all the same as all the rest of the matter and you can't break it down into anything simpler, we call that an element. And there's about... I don't know, definitely more than 100 elements. We're discovering new ones all the time, or I should say making new ones. Yeah. Um, and there's four main elements that are really important to humans uh, and all living things. Oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. We call those organic elements. And I am not a very good speller, so why is this useful to me? Uh, be because what's neat about the periodic table, the table and a lot of science is we abbreviate stuff. Yes, and thank so goodness. We, we put things into symbols, and we can uh, it's kind of a shorthand way of of doing it. So if you're looking at periodic table and we say the element name, uh, you can also look at it and see the symbol and we're talking about the same thing. The nice thing is if you discover an element, you get to name it. So some of you could name an element in the future Nickersonium. That'd be a really Ooh, nice or Radfordonium. That'd be <laughs> a good uh, tribute to us. When you get a chance, uh, the <laughs> element song is on YouTube. We watched it in class, but I wanted to let you know that that's just kind of a fun way to review or to refresh your memory for some of the different elements. So when we abbreviate the symbols, um, we either use the first letter of the word or there's a two-letter abbreviation. Okay, and so there's only 26 letters, right? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we got to double up on some of them. So, um, and if it is a two abbreviation, we have to always capitalize the first letter. Okay, that's good to know. So um, let me think of some examples here. Um, some of these they've probably seen before: carbon and cobalt. Notice how the and calcium, they all start with C, but you can't use C for all of them. So that's one another reason that that uh, second letter comes in play. Uh, but then there's sometimes, uh, you can see these where the front letter is the same as the rest of the word, but that's not always the case. Sometimes they're different, like uh, potassium and uh, lots of other ones, gold. Sodium. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, so... We've got a couple learning checks in this lecture notes, so you can pause this right now and see if you can use your periodic table, or maybe you know it from memory, what is the correct symbol for these three elements. And we encourage you to pause us, check it, and um, make sure that you can answer the three questions. We will expect you to do this on an assessment. Okay, and sometimes we can do the reverse, okay? And so if you know the, the symbol, you should be able to know what the element is. And so you guys should look up the, the abbreviations here and, and list out the, the element. Name. All right, the awesome. The name, yeah. All right, good yeah. deal. All right, so we're back in. Um, we take all these different elements and we got to arrange them. We just can't have them scattered around. And so we have something called a periodic table. And it's a way that we arrange the elements according to some of their properties, chemical properties and physical properties. And so here it is. It's set up. Um, you should notice from left to right that as you go across, the, the numbers increase by one. Eventually we will get to why that is. Um, and then there, it's also organized top to bottom. So we have columns that go vertically and then periods uh, that go left to right. How did they figure this out? Do you know who came, came up with it? Dmitry Mendeleev. Oh, okay. Um, and he actually came up with it. He was playing solitaire one night, kind of dozed off, and he had been pondering all of the known elements at the time. And he uh, he woke up and he, he had an epiphany. And so he started organizing uh, the the atoms by their physical and chemical properties and saw that there's a repeatable pattern. Mm -hmm. so. He was pretty young when he did that yeah, too. I think was. maybe you guys will doze off from homework one night and <laughs> wake up and have a great idea. Just not in class. Not in class. <laughs> so what are some of the physical properties that we can arrange elements by? Well, we can uh, basically look at their color, their size of the atoms, uh, of the elements themselves, the shape, are they square, are they a powder? their density, their mass divided by their volume, at what points they freeze and boil, or sometimes even their smell, like sulfur, for example, has a really distinct smell. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there, we have vertical columns, and that's these are called groups. And all of these that are uh, set up vertically, they have very similar, similar physical and chemical properties. And we're going to talk about the alkali metals, but all of those are soft, um, you can cut them with a knife, uh, and they're very violent. They have violent reactions with water. All, all of them in that group. 
Let's take a look at some of these groups. Um, our groups start at the left and work towards the right. Notice we're using some Roman numerals for this instead of regular numbers. And we can see how we can track down a group uh, from top to bottom. That, that all those are in group one. Then you notice there's a little gap in the middle there, and that's because all of those elements kind of have the same properties, so they're all kind of grouped together. And then you jump over to the right, and you finish up all the way up through group eight. Okay, so as I mentioned, the alkali metals is group one. These are some examples, and uh, the halogens are on, we jump over on the right side of the chart, and then we have the noble gases. Mm -hmm. Why are they noble? Well, um, I've heard this is what I teach my students is that uh, they're like nobility. Nobility would be kings and queens and princesses, oh. princes, and they don't hang out with common folk. And the noble gases are not reactive, and so they are by themselves in nature. They do not react with other... Some snobby elements yes, there. Yes, they so are. It sounds like, okay. Yeah. All right. So here's those <laughs> groups that we just listed. Um, we would expect you to be able to find a, a group on the periodic table. So if we said, find where group 7 is, uh, tell us what's their general characteristics, we expect you to be able to do that. Well, going across, those aren't called groups. What are those called? Those are called periods. Oh, okay. How do they work? Well, uh, basically, they just uh, they are increasing in number, and so we have the the number one is on the top left, and then going down from left to right. Okay, so it's kind of like playing Battleship. It is. If I get my group and then I get my period, I can locate a specific uh, element. Okay, and I notice how these are numbered with regular numbers and not um, Roman numerals, so that we don't get the period and the groups confused. So here's another chance for you to do a learning check. Um, see if you can kind of play Battleship and figure out which element fits within these groups on your periodic table. So the, the chart is also kind of set up as a uh, distinction between metals and non-metals. And so metals are, what are things like? Metals. Metals um, have really specific characteristics. So they're almost always shiny and ductile means they're flexible, especially when they get heated up. Mm -hmm. And um, everybody knows that you don't want to touch something electrical with metal, like putting tweezers into a socket. So they're really good conductors of heat and electricity. And non-metals are basically the exact opposite of that. They're dull, they're brittle, they fall apart, and they're really poor conductors of electricity, and so we call them insulators. Okay, and so this is kind of how the chart is set up, and there's a distinct kind of zigzag line that separates them. Why is that zigzag line there? Well, I call it the stairs because okay. you have upstairs and downstairs. And basically it's put in place there to separate uh, the two different types of elements that have those specific traits of metals and nonmetals. And so if you look at most good periodic tables, they'll have that colored in or darkened or maybe even a little separation there to help you remember that the nonmetals live upstairs and the metals live downstairs. All right. So learning check time, you need to try to find out uh, whether these uh, elements are metals or nonmetals. Make sure you watch the stairs. And then we're going to work backwards and we're going to see if we give you a group, um, can you tell me which metals fall within that group or nonmetals? So you can do that next. All right, we're going to stop there for today. And next up, we're going to talk about is there anything smaller than an atom? And hint, yes, but, there, yes is. there is. Yes, there is. All right, thanks for joining us for the Viking Science Academy today. And we look forward to seeing you in class with your completed notes on this session. Thanks. Okay.